Welcome back and welcome aboard. We're excited because we are taking our first cruise since we did all the refit on the boat and we are in salt water for the first time since we got the boat. We just came through the locks and now that COVID is lightening up a little bit, we're able to go to the marinas safely, of course, and uh, check them out and we'll bring you along for the ride. Before our journey can begin, we need to get out of Lake Washington onto Puget Sound. The way you do that is you go through the locks. Um, there's a locks that is a big locks, and there is a small locks. Uh, small locks is a little friendlier because the walls slide up and down with the boat, so you just tie up to those, and uh, you know they just move with the boat. Super easy. As you can see, we're in the big locks. The big locks are. Gosh, 760 feet long. You can have an enormous ship go through these things. But uh, they're a little intimidating because that wall does not move. You have to have 50 foot lines with you. So you can hand them to the lock master and then you pay them out as you go down or up, depending upon which direction you go. So this was a fairly uneventful uh, passing through the locks. But I'll tell you what, if you think going to a boat ramp is a hoot and watch things go wrong, you gotta go to the locks. Uh, the Ballard Locks is a great place to go set up a picnic and just watch everything go wrong for the day. Anyhow, uh, we made our run up and we got to Port Townsend. Uh, Port Townsend specifically, it's a great little RV park that also has a marina. It's absolutely beautiful there. Uh, and here we are, we came around the breakwater just trying to find a place to tie up. Because with COVID, it's hard to get anyone to give you any feedback, call you back, or even tell you if you have moorage. So we just made the first leg of our trip from the locks to Port Townsend, Port Hudson. And it's a little different because um, there's nobody here. The slips are open. They didn't answer the VHF. So it's a little bit odd. So anyways, um, we're here. We found a place to stay and um, We'll figure it out tomorrow morning and pay them in the morning. Successful night. We had the wind at our back and we had the tide at our back. So we were making 19 knots. Yes. And this boat does like 16 when it's stretching it. So it's nice. It's a, it's a good run. All right. So what we have here, this is a power cord for our boat. It's kind of a beefy thing. It's a 50 amp split phase, they call it. So it basically has uh, 125 volts on one side, 125 volts on the other side. And they both carry 25 amps, OK? Um, and usually you just have a receptacle at docks you plug this into. On the east coast, they're everywhere. In fact, they're now upgrading to like 100 amps. Uh, but we're on the west coast, and here we are at Port Hudson. Port Hudson's an older marina, and it only has 30 amp service. So to be able to feed a 50 amp boat, what we have, um, and be able to have the split phase, which is important for us because uh, the inverter that we have and the battery charger, it needs a split phase. I need to be able to have basically um, two of these 30 amp uh, feeds into this. And so what this sweet little converter here does, is called a Smart Y50. And what it does is it takes a 30 amp, 120 volt input, and it takes another 30 amp, 120 volt, uh, 5 volt input, and it combines them into a 50 amp, 250 volt inlet. Boom, it's exactly what we need. So this thing is worth its weight in gold. It's freaking awesome. Um, and what it basically does, it connects to one side on, on each side of the 30 amp, and literally it just combines the two into that. And ultimately, you know, this service is a, a 50 amp, or 60 amp, it, we call it, a 60 amp, um, 250 volt service. It's just meant for two different bolts. Uh, we're just able to combine it and put it in our cord. And here's the cool part. This particular thing, it is kind of smart because if um, they're out of phase or uh, if only one side has power, it will not let any power into my system and have an out of polarity type of situation, which long and short, it's bad, very bad. Um, so anyhow, this bad boy uh, takes care of that for us. Um, a couple manufacturers make this. I personally think every boat should have one of these that has
has a 50 amp service on it. And it, here's the funny part, it's our first outing and I bought this thing because I thought, well, maybe one day we'll have to use it. And it's literally our first outing with this boat uh, to a marina. We usually are on the hook and it's the first thing that we needed. So it's awesome that we had this. All right, here's our pro tip for today. Um, check out this, I'm gonna make sure the service is off. This is a 30 amp service. I'm gonna screw this here, let me show you this. This is pretty much, this is actually pretty decent for uh, a marina. Um, but what I'm gonna show you is scary. Look at that. It's kind of burnt, a little crispy. Uh, it's not got a lot of love in it and stuff. So this uh, is one of the ends of my converter that uh, we use for shore power. And this is a silicone based dielectric. What that does is if there's corrosion in there and grossness, this is a great conductor. In fact, I can feel these, these are warm, which basically means that it's not conducting very well. Um, heat is a matter of bad conductance. And so I'm gonna slather this bad boy with a bunch of this because um, there's, there's badness going on in this. And this is how you end up with a burnt cord or worse, a burnt boat. Um, number one reason for boat fires is electrical. So anyhow, we're gooping all that up and then we're gonna shove that in this side. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of my converter. And this will help it conduct uh, and deal with some of the corrosion in there because like I said, every marina suffers from this. Everybody should have a tube of this because it will save your boat. Well, we're about ready to leave Port Townsend. Uh, we just spent one night here and we're going to head over to Roach Harbor for the 4th of July. Um, we have our friends that are from the marina here and we're gonna go over together and we're just trying to figure out the best path and the best route um, to get over to Roach because the weather's pretty windy out there. So um, we will see how that goes. Okay, we left Port Townsend around noon and we are headed across the straits. We're with our friends um, that are in the same marina as us. We normally like to cruise at 15 knots, but their boat only goes 10 knots, so we're having to slow down and get through all these swells. It's gonna be about another hour of this rocking back and forth. How are you doing, baby? We're motoring around. It's bobbing like a cork. Yeah, we're taking uh, swells to the beam, which are never fun. No. But gives you that pendulum. But we're tacking a little bit into it so we can tack back. Um, all we can kind of do right now. Well, I think I've checked everything, so I don't know what's making those noises. I'm just wondering if there's something sliding around the engine room. I hope not. I hope not. You got your bins. Yeah. But what's that squeaky sound? It's the wheels. Oh, the steering wheel? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's a thing. Just a thing. Oh, well, this is definitely an interesting first trip out on the sound. It's been a couple times when we hit those swells. My stomach feels like I'm on a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another half hour? 45. 45 minutes? Uh, if we would have gone up the inside, that would have been smart money, but uh, we did not. We went around the outside, which is the straights. The wind isn't bad, it's just the, uh, the swells. And they're super stacked up. They're like one second apart. We're gonna come around the back of this island and then we're gonna put our nose right into these swells, which will be a lot better. Our game plan, uh, we are putting our bow into it. This is Vancouver Island in front of us. And so I'm hoping that it starts protecting us from the swell that's coming through. Um, and it's gonna be a gamble because the swell appears to be coming about right where the island is. So. Yeah, you know, hopefully it's gonna protect us. So uh, we'll set our bow to the north here in probably 10 minutes, and we'll see if it was a good bet or not. We made it through the worst of it. Yes, bet paid off. But you know people are gonna ask you why you weren't using autopilot. The only thing I didn't upgrade on the boat is the autopilot. So we're using an old school autopilot. 
Sorry, there's a chunk of shit in the water. So we're using an old school autopilot. It's the only thing that we didn't upgrade. It wasn't in the budget this year. So uh, the new school autopilots um, are cool. They have not only an X and Y plane, but they have a Z, so it takes into account the pitch and the roll of the vessel. It just keeps everything flattened out. I call it a poor man stabilizer. This is the autopilot before that system, and I don't trust it. Um, it doesn't take that into account, so it tries to keep you on course, but it doesn't care if it's pitching and rolling the boat all over the place, so I didn't use it. I depended on myself. So there, take that, autopilot. We made it. That was terrible. I hope that we don't have to do that again. We might have to get an upgraded autopilot this year, because I don't want to do that again. We ended up taking a slightly different route, because with those swells, really need to go bow in and our friends um, they went the other way plus they're going 10 knots we were able to go 13 knots to just get through it a little bit faster and get over those swells they finally caught up should be smooth sailing from here to Roach Harbor okay we're just arriving into Roach Harbor and we are gonna kind of figure out what our next step is they're talking about a modified med tie don't know exactly what that means with the COVID situation. We'll kind of keep you up to date. Well, we made it into Roach. The wind was blowing pretty hard, so we had to make sure that we fendered it all up. And now we are just waiting for our friends to show up and they're gonna come in right behind us. And we're looking forward to the 4th of July.